see. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our second class of this uh, round of workshops for Pathway to 7 Million. Uh, today, we are going to spend a lot of time talking about exactly what these lead generation models are. We're going to spend a ton of time working on this graph. We're going to talk about the met side of the graph. We're going to talk about the haven't met side of the graph. And we're going to kind of hope Hopefully, uh, by the time we're through here, understand what this graph is actually saying. First thing I would like to do is to thank uh, NJ Lenders and Mark Casamassina for supporting this class and providing us with flyers, et cetera, so that we can get through this. So onward we go. Uh, let's see if when I hit, I'm going to move here, if I'm on the right thing. I am. Okay. So the most important side of this graph, where we're going to see the majority of our business come from, is the left-hand side of, the, of uh, the entire picture. That's the MET side of our database. Our goal in this entire program in the 10 weeks that we're running now and any other additional workshops that you take from now uh, to get through your entire database is that we are going to take every single person that we have met that is in our database and put them through the eight by eight building of a relationship. So a lot of these people, you've already met them. You already have a relationship with them in some way, shape or form. But because life is busy, because we are busy, because different things are pulling us in a million different directions, we don't necessarily stay on top of, oops, sorry, did you get that person there? Um, yes, you did. Okay, welcome Deb Norman. So because life is so busy, we lose touch with people that we have met that are in our database. <coughs> So what we really want to do today is, and through this entire process, is to reintroduce ourselves to everybody in the MET side of our database and to create through saturation a really concrete view in their mind that yes, we are their realtor and that whenever they think about a realtor or think about real estate, that they will think of you. So the first step in our MET database side is to work on that eight by eight rebuilding and re-solidifying that relationship. And that is done through constant contact with them over a period of time. So first thing we're going to talk about is that relationship, uh, the eight by eight and where we're going with it. So we have taken the eight by eight plan from the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book and we have updated it. The reason I say that we've updated it is when this book was written, I think it was in 2002, there was not as much um, social media and electronic um, resources for you to stay in touch with your clients. And more importantly, your clients were not necessarily expecting to hear from you and or see you in those environments. So now that they are expecting to hear from you and see you in those environments, we need to make sure that we're including them. We do anticipate that there will be a new millionaire real estate agent book published at some point to keep threatening to do it. And we expect that when they do that, they will have an updated eight by eight plan. So what we have done is we have updated it for you. So I am gonna go through right now, which is the primary part of our entire workshop, all of the weeks that we will be um, doing here and what specific task we are going to uh, hit in each of these uh, weeks of the workshop. At the same time, I want you to keep in mind when we're finished going through this eight by eight plan, I'm gonna talk about these other plans that are here, your 33 touch and your 12 direct. I want you to understand, although you will not necessarily see it alluded to in each week as we're going through this plan. During the quieter weeks where there's less for you to do, physically hand on do for your eight by eight plan, we are gonna start setting you up for the 33 touch and the 12 direct. So when you leave our program, you will be completely organized eight by eight, 12 direct, 33 touch for all of the 100 to 150 people that you're working with right now. Okay, so in our eight by eight plan, we've broken it out to 10 to 11 weeks of uh, actual hands-on executing things that we are going to do uh, with these folks so that we can warm them up, get them on simmer, right? The first thing we're gonna do, and when I say week one, I'm talking about next week, we are going to mail a prosperity flyer that we have already written up and created for you, have it printed, with a quick sticky note where you're gonna say, hi, thinking of you, this is my office, whatever little short note that you're gonna to stick to that prosperity folder. You're gonna attach your business card and you're gonna put it in the hand addressed envelope to their home. 
we have all of that stuff for you in the office. We're providing it for you because we don't want you spending time worrying about what it is you're going to say to people. We want you executing on it. So if you have not already given Christina the number of flyers and envelopes that you need for the number of customers and clients that are in your first 10 weeks of this workshop, uh, please do that. Reach out to Christina, give her your number of customers and clients you're dealing with. We are suggesting anywhere between 100 to 150 people and by no means more than 250 people per workshop session. There is too much hands-on stuff going on in this uh, workshop period that we just don't feel like you can handle more than that as we go through. Uh, and you'll see. So the first week, starting next week, it's going to be a relatively short meeting. We are going to draw your attention to all of your people. We're going to have those flyers in your hands, sticky notes, and you're going to hand address the envelopes to their home. Week two, oops, I'm on the wrong screen. Week two, we are going to work on um, our neighborhood update through command. So we're going to make sure that everybody has a neighborhood set up and we're going to make sure that you have your um, follow-up plans for the neighborhood nurture set up so that you're touching these people without even uh, thinking about it. Week three, we're going to work on a social touch because now our customers and clients are expecting us to be in social media in all sorts of different locations of social medias. So week three, we're going to work on a social touch with those people. Week four, we're going to make the dreaded first phone call. Now, what you'll see here is we have hard mail, we have electronic email, we have a social touch, we have a phone call. The way that these eight, this plan is set up, Gary was very smart in doing this, is hitting people in all different directions and from all different directions so that they are used to hearing from you in multiple formats. Right. So when we're concreting this relationship with them, we're hitting them through multiple formats. So, yep, we are going to pick up the phone and we are going to call them in week four. So I want to prepare you for that. It's going to happen. And this is one of the reasons why we're saying no more than really 150 people, maximum 200, because it's going to take you time to get through this stuff each uh, each week that we're working. Week five, we're going to hand write a, a handwritten note and send them that note. Technically, you're going to write this note in week four after you hang up the phone talking to them, and then you're going to pop them in the mail on week five. So that week, week five, we're going to be working on either 33 Touch or 12 Direct. Week six, we're going to electronically send them a flyer that we've provided, that we've created for you already so that you can get a simple uh, email out to them and learn that process and so that they learn to expect that kind of stuff from you. Week seven is, again, a social touch. Week eight, we're going to be sending a very small item of, of value with either a flyer or a letter, to pay, probably going to be a letter from you. So I want you to start thinking about that small item of value that you want to create that is branded to you, that is inexpensive and not a, fly, a throwaway, and that can go in a small like a regular envelope. So one of the things that comes to mind with me is a sticky note. It could be a calendar. At this time of year, it's getting kind of late to be sending a calendar. I always think of those little rubber round circles to help you open a jar. I couldn't get the salsa open last night. Believe it or not, I was looking for one of those. Um, a little something that is not going to be thrown away, but is instead going to be tucked in a drawer so that if they ever say, oh my God, what, you know, for whatever reason, lose your name or contact information, they can go and find it. So start thinking about that. Week nine, we're going to make another dreaded phone call. And then in week 10, rather than a handwritten note, we're going to do a social direct message to these folks, uh, thanking them for their time on the phone call in the prior week, in week nine. So we go through all 10 weeks of these um, contacts, 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 contacts through our eight by eight plan. And where does that leave us? Well, once we finish going through everybody in this eight by eight plan, we are dumping those leads into our contact management database, and then they will fall into what we call our 33 touch plan. So we're going to go through the 33 touch plan with these folks, right? And I'll tell you what those steps are going to be. First of all, this plan continues forever. Once you go through the eight by eight plan with everybody in your database, and it could take you a year, 
to work through everybody. I, let's be realistic. If you have a thousand people in your database, you need to take this workshop somewhere between, you know, five and 10 times, probably more like seven times to get all the way through your database and to spend enough time warming up your customers and clients, right? But then when they come out, they're going to get automatically dumped into your 33 touch plan. And that will help you to remember to stay on top of these people. And it will mechanize a lot of the things you need to do to stay on top of these people to keep them in that perpetual simmer situation. So what's the first thing? We are going to work on setting up a 12 mail or 12 hard mail touches. We're going to recommend that you use quantum digital. We'll work through that. So that will handle your direct mail to them. We're going to use, uh, this is just a note that you're going to also be doing a farm and we want to make sure that you pick something different from that because sometimes people from your farm could wind up in your Met side of your database. We're gonna do email touches to them. Our neighborhood nurture, when we set that up in week two, I think it is where we set up neighborhood nurture, you're gonna choose whether you wanna touch them once a month or twice a month. That then becomes totally mechanized and it goes out 12 to 24 times a year. You don't have to touch it. It just goes and it's, in, it's information that they really want. It's telling them what their neighbors are doing. It's telling what their house is worth. So it's valuable information from you. The next thing is that you are going to add them to a plan within command that's going to remind you to pick up the phone and to call them and check in four times a year on a quarterly basis. You're going to pick up the phone, you're going to check in with them four times a year, and you're going to send them a quick handwritten note. So you'll see out of how many we have 36 potential touches plus four, so 40 potential touches. Uh, handwritten notes equals 48 potential hit touches. Of those 48 touches, you are only actually doing eight of those 48 potential touches for your people, but it's keeping them on simmer for you. We are also going to set you up with a follow-up plan where we're going to hopefully scrape birthdays if you don't have them already from uh, social media. And we are going to have a follow-up plan that is going to say, hey, Deb, hey, Meg, hey, lady, today's uh, you know Jane Trust Ryan's birthday. Send a quick GIF message or social or a text message, something quick to draw attention to you that it's their birthday and you're reminding, right? Super simple. Next thing. Same thing, we're gonna set you up Mother's Day, Father's Day plan where you can send a group social or text message out to your people just to draw attention, hey, I'm thinking of you, right? Home anniversary, that's also gonna be set up through command, whether you wanna call them, text them, send them a note, that's something else that the system is just gonna remind you to do. You'll make a simple quick call, text or note. And then finally, the biggest item of this 33 touch plan that we're gonna set up which we're actually not gonna set it up, but we're gonna have you thinking about it, is an annual item of value to your customers and clients. So um, at our office in particular, there's a lot of agents who do uh, kind of Thanksgiving pie kind of thing where they give out Thanksgiving pies. I've seen a lot of people who go to um, Costco or BJ's and they buy the ketchup, mustard, and relish, and at the 4th of July or Labor Day, Memorial Day, they deliver that as something of value just to have a little bit of face-to-face -face time with the customers in your database over the course of the year. So you can see um, this is a lot of touches to your database over a year's time. When you finish with your eight by eight and getting all of your customers and clients all the way through that eight by eight and into the 33 direct program, or 33 touch program, excuse me. In the future, this is what you will be doing to prospect for your customers and clients moving forward, okay? So let's say you have a thousand people in your database and you're dividing that thousand people in your database into four quarters making four phone calls a year to those people, right? So that's 250 people, I'm sorry, that's a thousand people every four months that you need to call. And you divide those thousand people into 250 a month. You divide those 250 over a certain number of days a week, five days, six days, whatever it is. And it breaks down to, let's say, I don't know, 10 calls a day that you're gonna be making. So what we're setting you up for is so that you have a consistent plan 
every day in the future to be marketing to your database. Your database is by far the best return on investment, ROI, on, for a lead, by far. And they will give you back uh, leads, whether they sell or whether they, they know somebody who, lists, who plans on listing and selling. Gary Keller says, and I truly believe him, that if you follow through with this, with your eight by eight, and then dumping your folks into your 33 touch, that you will have a 10% return on your database. So if you have a thousand people in there, which is a lot of people that you've already met, right? That's a hundred transactions a year. I wanna back that up to a smaller database. Let's say you have 300 people in your MET database. That's a 30, that's 30 transactions is 10% return on that database. You cannot possibly get that kind of business anywhere else for this amount of money or time that we're asking you to spend, okay? So I want you to keep that end line in, in mind. The last thing that you're gonna send to your 33 touch is that they are always gonna get just listed and just sold cards from you. So you're just listed and just sold cards when your business is really up and going and running is really going to be your business biggest expense because everybody in your met side of your database is going to get just listed just sold cards regardless of where that house is listed okay it's just another reminder that hey we're in this business we are busy look at where we're selling right so if you go back to our chart ignore my little 12 direct over here so if you go back to our chart and you have your contact on the met side of the database we've run them through this eight by eight in our workshop right everybody first 150 people they go through our eight by eight they dump into our 33 touch. We do this workshop, let's say 10 times, we have a thousand people in our 33 touch, right? Running, cooking, 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 right? They are going to give you repeat business and they are going to give you referral business, right? So what if they say to you, okay, Jane, you know what? My sister is moving to town. Her name is Nancy and blah, 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 blah. She's moving from Massachusetts. I'd love for you to talk to her, right? So your job, Nancy's a new person who's coming out of your Met side of your database, but she's actually a have not met person. I've never met Nancy, right? So what do I have to do? Follow this line over here, right? And you come back up and you have to build a relationship with Nancy. Now, hopefully Nancy's buying a house, so you'll have a lot of uh, in-person time with her. But if Nancy, for whatever reason, isn't buying a house, she still is somebody who becomes a Met for you and you would put her through that eight by eight relationship right and then in the end she would wind up in a 33 touch so you say to me well how do i put nancy in the eight by eight if we're not running this workshop we are going to set you up through pathway to seven million and through command with a smart plan for an eight by eight for anybody who's new so when you add somebody who's new to your database, you're gonna tag them with the eight by eight smart plan. And in your daily prospecting for your 33 touch, you're gonna to say, oh, I have these four people who are eight by eights and this one needs a phone call and this one needs a social touch and this one needs whatever that is. So my goal in the end of this whole program for you is that after you've gone through the eight by eight with your existing met side of your database, they'll all be in 33 touch. Then on a daily basis, you're gonna be spending, let's say two hours a day prospecting for business, working on your business, not in your business, right? And in that two hours when you're working on your business, you're gonna be following through with your database who are already warm, and you're gonna be following with your new Mets through this eight by eight to throw them into the 33 touch, right? So this is a consistent, execution program from today day one through ever and it's going to set you up to have good uh procedures in place and good um items to be working on that are always going to give you return okay so now let's look at the other side of our database which is our haven't met database right we are always want to be adding new business 
back into our database to grow our database and to build that percentage of referrals that are going to be coming out of it. Because if we're starting with a 300 person database and 30 transactions a year, we're absolute freaking rock stars at 30 transactions a year, right? But we know we can do more because we're much uh, more uh, mechanized than we ever were in the past, right? We're leveraging our time. So we want to be finding new buyers, new sellers, and new people to put into our database. So the first way that we do this and that uh, Millionaire Real Estate Agent talks about is through the 12 Direct program. It's taking people we haven't met and creating new business out of them, making new contacts with them. And guess what happens? We take those people we haven't met that we've created new contacts with and follow the line back up and they wind up in our eight by eight smart plan. We work through the process of concreting the relationship in their mind through saturation and they get dumped back in here in 33 touch. Okay, so let's look at the 12 direct plan. The 12 direct plan continues forever. Again, very much like the, um, the 33 touch, but the 12 direct plan is typically based on a geographical farm rather than a sphere of influence farm. So your 33 touch is your sphere of influence farm. Your uh, 12 direct is to cold people, it's to your geographical farm. And I am suggesting 200 to 300 homes. You don't want it to be something that you start out and then you don't finish because you don't have enough money. If you start doing geographical farming and you spend all your money up front and then you don't have any money to continue it over a long period of time, then you have thrown your money out the window. That is the most important thing about geographical farming is that it has to be consistent, consistent consistent or you are throwing your money out the window. I cannot tell you how many times agents have come to me. Oh, I just sent a thousand cards out to, you know, a thousand people in XYZ neighborhood. And I'll say to them, okay, what are you doing next month? And they'll say, well, nothing. If you don't touch your people every 30 or anybody every 30 to 45 days, they will forget you. You need to touch them every 30 to 45 days. That is a marketing statistic put out by the uh, National Association of Realtors, right? We talked about it last week. So do not send something if you cannot consistently send something through the mail, right? So again, we're going to set up an account on Quantum Digital. That's what we're recommending until command uh, really gets smoother in this process. So we're gonna set up an account on Quantum Dil uh, Digital. We're gonna set up a, and choose a relevant auto mail program. And there's a whole bunch of different programs in there. And when I say relevant, you need to know your audience. Your audience in my belief system as a professional is that they want uh, valuable information about real estate values, home repair, home maintenance, um, all sorts of things that have to do with providing them and their house with equity right? And understanding the equity in their house. I personally do not believe that sending um, recipes and cute little pictures of puppies are what I want to do for my business. I don't consider that relevant value. You may, right? So everybody's business is a little different. So we're going to create and choose that auto mail program. We're going to upload our list of our geographical farm. We're going to commit to it and it is going to be done for the year. Okay, we're just done for the year. Again, just like in our 33 touch, these people are also going to get your just listed, just sold cards. They are gravy and they always get sent to this group. It doesn't matter where the home is, okay? Why? Well, think about it. You're sending your auto mail program to them and it's all branded with your name and how special you are and it looks like you, right? So. You're trying to hit that neighborhood. You're trying to make an impression in there, right? More cards that you send in the mail to people you don't know with similar branding, similar looks, the more likely you are to make an impression on them, right? You have to understand when you're sending something in the mail, you have about 10 seconds from the time they are holding those documents in their hand, the whole pile of mail that came that day and shifting it into the recycle bin, right? They're going through one by one by one, right? You need to make an impression on their brain that, oh, there's that realtor again, there's that realtor again, there's that realtor again. Every once in a while, they will pause and look at it. It doesn't matter where the house is, it's showing that you're active, it's showing that you're selling. So these people will also get those just listed, just sold cards. 
That's why I told you earlier that the just listed, just sold portion of your um, marketing is going to be the most expensive portion of your marketing ad infinitum moving forward. Okay. So I want you to think, I'm going to go back here for a second. I do want you to think about your geographical farm a bit. I want you to think about where you are going to have that farm. And um, I think I have it here. Uh, maybe I don't have it here. So I'm just going to talk about it. Um, I want you to think about your geographical farm. You need to pick 200 to 300 homes. I am suggesting that you pick an area where you are comfortable already. It could be the neighborhood that you're living in, for instance. Um, to me, that would be a very good choice. A lot of people already know you there. Um, it could be the neighborhood you were living in when you had all your kids and the kids were in school um, and that you have a lot of contacts there. You wanna make sure that you go into the MLS once you've decided on a particular neighborhood and look for two things. You want to look and see what the turnover in that neighborhood is. In this day and age, in the current market that we're having now, there's a lot of turnover, right? If you're seeing there's like zero turnover in the neighborhood, you have to step back and say one of two things. A, is the neighborhood hot and ready to go because it hasn't been turning over? Or B, do people just not move out of there, right? And that's a judgment that you're going to have to make. The second thing you want to look at is who is selling in that neighborhood. If you see one agent in there that's got 60, 70% of the listings that's occurring in that neighborhood, you again have to pause and say A or B. A, that person has this locked up, I am never gonna break into it, or in your realtor mind, B, you know what? Maybe people are sick of that person and they want another option. So then you're gonna have to decide between those two things. But I want you educated in your choice of your farm when you make that decision, right? I just don't want you going willy-nilly into a farm uh, without having that background statistic, okay? So moving forward, this class will be every Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. After the class is over, it will be posted onto the uh, office Facebook page, so you'll always be able to go in there and see it. Um, just check the office calendar to confirm this rare occasions that something is going to interfere with it. We picked 11 a.m. because that's typically after the sales rally. So just check that. Um, I want you to, if you haven't already given Christina your name and how many uh, materials you want, I really would like you to go in and check that. I believe everybody except for Deb Norman, and actually she gave me another name and I forget and I apologize for that. Uh, your materials are already waiting for you at the office. Just reach out to Christina. Christina, you have that info for me? Yep, I thought she was coming on. Just reach out to Christina. Go ahead. Yeah, so no, Jane, I'm sorry, it's Deb. I was just gonna apologize. I just reached out to her this morning, so I apologize okay. for the lead. All right, that's okay. Christina, you ha who do you have there ready? Um, I have uh, ladies and I have um, someone else reached out to me. Actually, I think Megan O'Brien's I also have. Uh, okay. The only ones that aren't ready right now are uh, Carly Weiss's and Deb Norman's and I'll be in the okay. office tomorrow so I can put those packages together. Okay, great. So you'll see them. So, you know, by end of business tomorrow, everybody will be there. They're sitting on the counter in the office and they're just packets of flyers and envelopes. The flyers are already tri-folded. So that's great. You don't even have to fold the stuff, the envelopes and the uh, sticky notes. So they're there for you. They're ready to go. So next week, let's make sure that we have all of our SOI in command. We really want you to be using command for this because all of the smart plans that we're going to talk about are in command, and that's going to set you up in the future for command to tell you, hey, what do you have to do today? This is what you have to do today. What we're looking for is name, address, cell phone, email, and hopefully birthday. When we go through our social media, we can scrape birthday off um, as needed. I want you to write down the following SMART plans, and I want you to add them to your command in, um, or add them to your SMART plans in command, okay? The monthly neighborhood nurture or the biweekly neighborhood nurture, the quarterly call plan, the anniversary plan, the birthday plan, and the eight by eight KW prosperity plan. Okay, when you go in there, all of those plans are created by KW uh, as the author, except for the 8x8 eight eight KW Prosperity Plan. I think that's me as the author. It could be Christina as the author. It's going to ask you to save them. 
I want you to, to save as the default, which is my quarterly call plan. Okay, save it as default, because in the future, when you're putting new METs into your database, you're going to assign them the, K by t the 8 by 8 KW Prosperity Plan, and that KW Prosperity Plan is going to automatically assign for you the Neighborhood Nurture, the uh, Quarterly Call Plan, et cetera, and it's going to be looking for my birthday plan, my uh, home anniversary plan, okay? This is where you get to decide also if you want to send it monthly, uh, the neighborhood nurture, or biweekly, the neighborhood nurture. My opinion, I'd send the biweekly one. Um, it becomes more something that they're looking for that they're used to seeing. Okay. Uh, so what else? For next week, you're going to need to buy rolls of stamps, depending on how many customers and clients that you're planning on working with. If you have 100, you need 100 stamps. But just remember that later on, we're going to be sending... Uh, those handwritten notes, so you're going to need stamps for those too. I want you thinking about the farm area. I thought I had this here. I couldn't remember where I had it. The people that you want to target. I want you thinking about your small mailable item of value, what you're going to throw in that envelope in week eight and branding of it, because that's going to take some time for you to receive it. So start thinking about that. I want you to buy 100 note cards, at least 100 note cards cheap ones. Don't go crazy about what do they have to look like at it. Forget that. Don't make yourself nuts about that. I would go to, um, you know, the dollar store. There's a dollar store pretty much across from our office. Um, and you can buy the little plastic containers of note cards or they houses or birds or landscapes or whatever on them. Cheap. Don't spend a lot of money on them. Um, but you want to buy those so that you have them. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? You want to unmute yourself and ask any questions about what we've got going on? Go for it if you do. Nope. Okay, then. So here's what you need to do. You need to think about this stuff. You need to get yourself ready. If you want to review the documents of what I just presented, the 8 by 8, the 33 touch, and the 12 direct, you can find all those steps, the whole process laid out in the file section on the agent page on Facebook. So you can go in there and you can download them so that you can see what we will be executing each and every week. And then on those lighter weeks, like I said, the, what, the week where we're going to mail the um, note, which you will have written the week before while you're making the phone calls, we're going to set up your 33 touch or we're going to set up your 12 direct so that when you're done, you're done. You've got everything. Lady, you have your hand up. You have a question? Yes, I do. So the... Um the 100 contacts that well, I chose 100 contacts to start with. So that's okay. coming from people that we already have a relationship with? Correct. People okay. that you already have relationship, your met side of the database. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank okay. You. Mm -hmm. Sure. Anybody else have anything? Nope. Okay, then everybody, we will see you next Tuesday and we're going to get rocking and rolling. It'll be a very short meeting. Uh, you're going to be working next week on getting those first letters out to everybody. Okay, have a great day and look for an email or pop by the office end of business tomorrow to pick up all of your stuff for next week. Be good. Talk to you next week.